the, the bigger news coming out of baseball, beyond the fact that baseball is back, is it relates to the COVID-19 situation and the protocols that baseball is using and the protocols football will be using. Outfielder Juan Soto of the Washington Nationals fell into a donut hole that the NFL is very concerned about. That lag between when you give a test and when the test result comes back and what you do in the interim. And as it turned out for Soto, he was tested on a Tuesday, played in an exhibition game against the Orioles on Tuesday night, worked out at Nationals Park on Wednesday, and then found out on Thursday morning that that test from Tuesday was positive. So, obviously, he didn't play last night. He wasn't in the stadium last night. But the question becomes, who may he have infected against the Orioles on Tuesday? Who may he have infected in the clubhouse or wherever on Wednesday? And that's what the NFL is dealing with, Shereen, until there is point-of-care testing that can give a result within 15 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes, or a full hour where you don't have to send it away and wait for 24 hours. In that 24 hours between collection of sample and communication of result, you can have somebody who ultimately was positive when the test was was taken who has been on a practice field around teammates or, worst-case scenario, in a game against opponents for three hours out there sweating and breathing and coughing and bleeding and that that's the ultimate chemistry experiment for the NFL that's the you know the players are the guinea pigs to see whether or not there will be transmission in that kind of a setting because Juan Soto's example proves to us that that possibility is real that there's going to be a guy who slips through the cracks when the time lag is 24 hours from when the test is is harvested to when the test is finalized and look Football's way worse than baseball. Baseball doesn't have contact when you're out in the outfield. I mean, you're more than six feet away from the, the other outfielder. When you're infielder, you, you're more than six feet away. So they do have the social distancing in, in baseball for the most part, aside from when they're in the dugout and they wear the mask when, when they're in the dugout. Some of them wear out, them out in the field. But football, you're just not going to have that. And, and some players we already know are resistant to wearing these masks, so they're going to be spitting all over each other and sweating all over each other and bleeding all over each other. And we did see an example in the XFL right before it closed of a player testing positive, and we don't know how that spread because it shut down right after that. But it very easily could spread and very quickly could spread in the NFL. We see why the NFL wants, the NFLPA wants daily testing. There's no question about that. That's what they need. But they've got to turn these things around, these tests around, very quickly to get the results and not have happen what Juan Soto had happen, where you are amongst your teammates and you have tested, you do have it and you don't know you have it at the time. Yeah, I had somebody connected to the union try to push back on me a little bit last night when I raised this point, arguing that there would be a test on Friday, you go into a bubble after that in advance of a Sunday game. So if it comes back Saturday that you're positive, you're going to be out but it's unlikely that you're going to have a situation where you test on Saturday and you get the positive on Sunday or I, I I, look, I don't, I I look back at the text again. I didn't follow it when I got it. I don't follow it. Now the reality is there's always going to be a lag. There's always going to be a possibility that you develop the positive one day after you test negative, right? If you're tested every day, negative, 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 positive, that's how it works. The positive just happens. If in that 24 hours between generation of the sample that becomes positive and finding out it was positive, you play in a game, you're going to potentially infect other people, people from other teams, teammates. I mean, that's the one moment where everyone gets thrown into a blender. They can do everything they can all week long to keep guys six feet apart and to wear masks and to be careful. And, and even if they're doing 11 on 11 drills, there are ways that they can, you know, either not huddle or use the wider line splits as they do walkthroughs. There are all sorts of precautions you can take and they will. But when it's time to play a game, if one guy's out there who's positive, you're right, Shireen. It's not like baseball where everyone is spread out. They're all pressed together. And there is a way that you are going to potentially have a guy who Tested Saturday, it came back negative. Gives a test Sunday before the game, 
it comes back positive after the fact. And then you have to do all the contact tracing and all the enhanced testing, and you have to watch and wait and see if you're going to have an outbreak. That's the concern that football has, and that's what they need to be taking seriously until they have point-of-care testing. The, the great thing for baseball and for the NFL looking forward is that baseball conducted in their last round of tests that they announced, conducted over 10,000 tests. They had five positive tests, less than 1%. But if it's just one player in football and he's around all those other players and doesn't know he's positive, he's asymptomatic, then they're going to have a problem because we know how quickly it spreads. So that that five positive test on the one week could turn into 25, 30, 40 positive tests, who knows how many, uh, the next time they test. And so that's the danger you face. You also face the danger of, uh, a whole group of players, say all the quarterbacks, which, you know, Bruce Arians said he may quarantine a quarterback. But what if all your quarterbacks test positive the Friday before a game? What are you going to do uh, for a quarterback? So there are so many hurdles left. Uh, even if NFL and NFLPA agree on what they need to agree on, there are tons of hurdles left for this season to transpire from start to finish. The biggest leap of faith, the biggest roll of the dice that the NFL is taking here is that, and they believe this to be true, that transmission in an open-air stadium or under a very high dome that has a ventilation system that was designed to counter an aerosol attack by terrorists, and all of the domes have that level of technology, that in that setting the transmission rates will be ridiculously low, that the transmission happens most frequently in confined spaces. Now, we'll find out whether or not that's true, but they're pinning the hopes for the 2020 season on that because it's inevitable that one of these guys, week one, when they're playing all those games, one of those guys will have given a test that morning after previously testing negative, will test that morning and find out the next day that he was positive and he will have played in the game. And that is going to be an issue that the NFL needs to be ready to deal with. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.